Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. Today, in this video, we're going to discuss about Occupational Safety and Health Hirac Assessment. This video was made with those working at Petro Station in mind, apart from wanting to help spread awareness on hazard identification and the required preventive measures. The Petro Station that we chose to visit was Shell Puncha Alam. So, what is HIRAC? The HI stands for Hazard Identification, where we identify operations that will risk health and safety. The RA stands for Risk Assessment and the RC stands for Risk Control. Risk Assessment is the looking at the possibility of injury or harm occurring to a person if exposed to a hazard. Risk level can be calculated using the following formula. Risk equals to likelihood multiplied by severity. The diagram shows the risk assessment matrix level where we identify the grade of likelihood and severity. Here is a table of indication of risk level where it can be graded from low to extreme risk. For risk control, we obey the hierarchy of controls. The hierarchy of control is a system for controlling risk in the workplace. The hierarchy of control is a step-by-step -step approach to eliminate or reduce risk. The first hazard identified at the petrol station is fire and explosion risk. Due to the flammability of petrol vapors, petrol stations carry a risk of fire or explosion. Ignition of petrol vapors can happen if vapor comes into contact with a heat source capable of igniting it. Risk Evaluation Based on the mentioned equation, severity needs to be multiplied by likelihood in order to obtain the risk level. For fire and explosion risk, the severity can be graded 5. This is because numerous fatality and irrecoverable property damages can happen. The likelihood can be graded 2. This is because the accident is very unlikely to occur and has not been occurring in many years. Thus, the risk level obtained is 10, which is high and high risk requires immediate action in order to stop and control the hazard. So, what are the risk control to such hazard? Firstly, escape routes. Workers need to keep all escape routes and fire exits clear. It is also a must to make regular checks on those routes. Next is safe disposal. Sand used for cleaning or containing petrol spills will be flammable and thus should be disposed of safely. Lastly, hazard signs. Workers need to identify hazardous areas and control all sources of ignition. It is best to use appropriate warning and hazard signs in those areas. Second hazard is slips, trips and falls. Fuel and oil spillage on the forecourt can present a slipping hazard to workers. Workers are exposed to bathroom-related accidents such as slip and falls. This is because bathroom is constantly exposed to sets and water, especially when shared with public. As for risk evaluation, the severity is 1, which the minor abrasion, bruise, cuts and first aid type injuries. The likelihood is graded as 5, which is likely to occur. Thus, the risk level is 5, which is considered as medium risk, where regular monitor and additional precaution practices are needed. These are the risk control for the second hazard. Firstly, flooring. Installing mats, pressure-sensitive abrasive strips can further improve safety and reduce risk of falling. Second, a proper fitting footwear increases comfort and prevents fatigue, which in turn improves safety for the employee. And thirdly, hazard sign. A wet floor sign must be displayed when walking across the surface that could result in an individual slipping. Lastly, electrical hazard. Accidents are mainly due to misuse of or badly maintained equipment and there is an increased risk of electric shock when using equipment externally in a wet environment. Overload outlets or faulty wires can cause fire. As for risk evaluation, the severity is 4, which has it most likely to occur at workplace. The likelihood is 2, which injuries obtained can be disabled but permanent damage are unlikely to occur. So, the risk level is 8, which is considered as high risk that requires immediate action to control the hazard. For the risk control, 
all electrical equipment used should be insulated and supplied through a protected circuit and use an extension cord that match the average of the appliances. Okay, that's all from me, Nurul Densha Nuzaizli and my partner Nurul Akila Ibrahim. A big thanks to our supervisor, Associate Professor RR Dr. Mimi Harani Hasim. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.